Hello and welcome back everybody, Interjection here with another Age of Empires 3 1v1 commentary and this would be my 6th commentary on this brand new channel of mine and my 31st commentary overall if we're counting some of the other commentaries that I have done on my other channel and that does not include team game games but uh, yes anyway the, we're going to do some Age of Empires 3 discussion here and the first thing I'm going to talk about is the crates which this Russian player has started with if you noticed then he did actually start with 6 food crates and 1 wood crate a very very nice start there. No coin involved. Obviously, coin is not the uh, most useful resource at the very beginning of the game. But uh, yes, then this Russian player gonna collect up all that food and put all of his settlers straight onto food and get 800 food as fast as he can and age up. Though there will be a little bit of uh, kind of tactical choices involved when we when I say that because uh, he as you, as we can see, his settlers train in batches of three. And uh, because they train in batches of three, you can either age up with 14 settlers or 17 settlers. And you really have to choose because you cannot go anywhere in between because they train in batches of three. But we'll switch over to the other player. And this Spanish player down here started with, uh, believe me, I did check before I started recording. He had three food crates and one wood crate. And you might think, well, that's a little bit unfair interjection. Well, it sounds unfair, but it really it isn't because, well, Spain, they start with four. But well, they start with six settlers. Spain gets six gatherers at the very beginning of the game, which is normal. Russia, on the other hand, just start with a fuck ton of crates because uh, we'll go back to the Russian player. They they start with five gatherers. They start with one less gatherer than any other civilization. And you see this batch of three settlers. It takes ages to get that first batch out. It takes almost you usually only get that first batch by the first minute of the game. So you're actually playing the game with just five settlers for an entire minute, which is a kind of a disadvantage. Plus you have one less settler than the other player. Plus Russia cannot send settlers from their home city. It's not something that they can do. So they start with more food to kind of offset that disadvantage. But we'll go over to Darwin Giovanni and see what he's up to. Over here, grabbing himself 140 food, getting the sunflowers treasure. I don't understand why sunflowers are worth that much food. I mean, who eats sunflowers? But not the point. Getting himself a crazy amount of food. Where is he off to now down here? I imagine to get this treasure here. 80 food guarded by a patch of peanuts. That's more right. That's more like it. Peanuts can be worth food. But now going to grab himself another 80. He hasn't actually taken any damage getting that, getting the 140 food treasure. He must have been creeping like a beast. Uh, no, no, no. The dog has taken the damage. So the, he, he tanked the the treasure guard as you can see these coyotes are attacking him and he's taking some damage but uh, he must on the first treasure didn't take any damage and he took the damage on the war dog instead I'm not really sure if that's a good idea because well it just means that blue can easily polish off this war dog very easily but then on the upside Red's Explorer does have more XP, sorry, more hit points with which he can uh, collect other treasures. Oh my god, aging up with the governor this quickly, this is crazy. I mean, <laughs> 140 food plus 80 food is just going to get him to the colonial age so much faster. And Spain, as he can, he's putting his settlers on wood and aging up through the governor. And we take a look at his deck, it's a very, very, very fortress-based thing. All of these uh, civil, all of these things indicating a fast fortress agenda. Going to rush to the fortress age and have a fortress age agenda. Here he's getting 250 wood exactly, and then with his explorer, it's on his way right now, he's going to build this trading post over here. If we turn the play, not play fast, whoops, turn the fog of war button, um, you can see he's now building a trading post. Over collected on 18 wood there, but his settlers now back to food. Uh, unfortunately, that 18 wood is something he will not be able to use for a while. I mean, if he'd switched his settlers sooner, then that 18 wood could be food, and then he'd be aging up to the Fortress Age even quicker. Every second counts. But yes, this Travois man, every time it walks past a controlled uh, socket, it'll grant him some XP, and every time you build something in Age of Empires or train something, you gain XP, which contributes towards your next shipment. We see that green bar just jumped up upon the completion of the trading post. We'll do so again just there where the dogs were trained, and uh, that contributes to shipments. When it gets to the top, you get a shipment. He does have a shipment available right now, but he's not going to spend it because he wants to, you know, wait until he's in the colonial age so he has access to these bigger treasure, uh, bigger shipments. And obviously you want to do that. So he's trained some war dogs there, which is unusual for a player doing a fast fortress because war dogs cost 75 food each. And that means he's kind of squandering the advantage he had from collecting those food treasures. But at the same time, these war dogs can be used to grab himself some of the big, beefy treasures. And I mean big. Like over here, we see 240 XP. That's like that's like an entire shipment. This costs 332 experience points for that shipment. That's like almost all of it. Like, that's crazy. I mean, like, a shipment is worth, like, 700 resources. Like, that is just... Like, so that's why he's doing it. What else is on the map over here? We see another 240 XP trace. If he can grab himself both of these, then it's so worth it. These war dogs, 75 food each, slowing his age up down. But it would just be so worth it. 700 coin now arriving for the red player. And uh, with that, obviously, he has 285 coin. He aged up with the governor. And he, uh, he aged up with an outpost and 200 coin. He's put the outpost over here to protect the trading post a little bit. I'll talk about this trading post in a moment, but... 
700 coin, gonna gather that up, collecting nothing but food, gonna age up. Yumi Yu just now hitting the colonial age, we'll switch back over to him aging up with 400 wood. That is his age up choice. His first shipment here is the spice trade. Uh, villagers gather food from huntable animals 20% faster, and then he's gonna send 700 wood after that. So he's gonna get an economic upgrade, gonna collect from these, uh, these pronghorn a little bit more quickly. Over here, he's going for a Carrera de Bois treasure. Uh, he's got a, he's got a, a, an explorer dog, which is unusual for Russia. Obviously, uh, he looks like his first shipment was Polar Explorer. And look, instead, obviously, you cannot send settlers, and often Russian players will send 300 wood. And with that wood, they can build their barracks very quickly and start training units uh, very quickly compared to other civilizations since they can build the blockhouse, which is a barracks in age one. But instead of that, he sent uh, the Polar Explorer, a bit more of a boomy route, because this upgrades his explorer combat by 50% either way, meaning he can grab some of the big beefy treasures, just like what Blue is doing down here. Blue coming down here to try and ninja in a little bit of a conflict over here. Blue's Explorer is very strong, has a 18 range damage, whereas uh, this uh, the Red Explorer only has 12 because it has not been, the, the, the shipment has not been sent. So, you know, Blue able to get big treasures as well. We'll have a look at the treasures that he has found. Uh, we see he managed to grab himself, uh, Yumi Yu found himself 165 XP, that's crazy, that's a lot of XP as well. Found himself 135 wood, that's a nice one. Lots of big treasures at the moment on this map. So, Red now going in with his War Dogs to try and get the second 240 XP treasure, but here Blue coming in, sacrificing his Explorer Dog, the door Ward Dog, Sorry, the Explorer coming in as well. Killed off, looks like, a few of the War Dogs there. Another one going down. And now, uh, looks like he's going to focus down Red's Explorer. And uh, with that, these also these Treasure Guardians are focusing down Red. Meaning he's going to lose... Going to lose the... Going to lose the Explorer there. Uh, but... What is this? This looks like a bug. I've just got that on my screen. Okay, it's still there. Okay, so Red training some more War Dogs to try and kill off Blue's Explorer there. But uh, Red, sorry, Blue getting these Musketeers up close and personal. They arrived just in time to save the Explorer there. Obviously, Red wanted to bring down Blue's Explorer. Wanted to kill that Explorer so that it could not steal the 240 XP treasure. All it's going to do now is use its special attack on the Treasure Guardian, which instantly kills it. And then he's going to steal this 240 XP and watch this green bar. Boom! That is crazy. But yes, we're gonna go and look at what Yumi. I haven't really been. I've just been focusing on that fight there. The shipments that have been sent. Well, I can't really tell. It's harder to tell when it's Popcat because all of the military shipments get filtered out as red. But uh, by the looks of things, he sent 700 wood. Uh, he sent spice trade for that upgrade. 700 wood. Get the block houses up. So we can see two more block houses. Um, probably we'll get some market upgrades with the build, building some houses. Uh, and he aged up with 17 settlers, which is a very colonial-based agenda for Russia. And he knows he's got... He started very boomy. And uh, he started very boomy, which means he knew he had some extra time. Because Don Giovanni, obviously, now about to hit the fortress age. We'll take a look at the time he does. He's built a stable. Oh, yes, I'm so happy. This is going to be a great game. Uh, <laughs> I just He's going to be training lances. This is the only reason he's trained at made a stable. Because he's going to make the... the Gonna make the unique Spanish unit, which is Lancers, sending five Lancers from his home city there. He is pop capped at the moment, so he, uh, no, so he's gonna have to build some more houses pretty soon, and he's gonna have to think about that. Uh, but here, obviously, Lancers are a great unit. They are uh, unique Spanish cavalry, which do 20 damage, unlike a Hussar. Hussars do 30 damage. 30 straight up damage to everything, whereas a Lancer does 20 damage with a times 3 multiplier versus infantry, and as we can see, uh, the, the Yumi Yu, the Russian player, has just trained nothing but infantry. However, it's kind of strange. We'll go back to Yumi here. He's sending five Cossacks. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Just got the um, uh, Age 2 coin upgrade. Um, amalgamation, amalgamation, which increases coin gathering by 20%. It costs 200 wood, so was he using that 700 wood, which he sent, being very boomy. And uh, he has a very large mass of musketeers with three blockhouses uh, to make more and more units here. So he knows, obviously, Red... Uh, going to turn the Fog of War on. As he, oh, he hasn't scouted over here. He's not scouted Red. He does not know he's making lances. And I imagine that uh, Red will go for a whole bunch of... I'm going to make lots of lances. We're going to have a look at him in a moment. Actually, we'll just do it now. Two falconets on the way as well. And uh, he's got very large lances. Ten, ten lances there. We'll have five more in a moment. So 15 lances plus four hussars. Once the two cannons arrive, I imagine we'll push out and see some some aggression going on. But the fast fortress strategy here, obviously, for Spanish. Spanish is definitely considered one of the best civilizations in a 1v1 in Age of Empires 3 on the vanilla. And that is because their fast fortress is so powerful. Obviously, Spanish, uh, their shipments their, their unique bonus as a civilization means their shipments require less experience points before they become available. So it just means you will have more experience, more trips, yeah, more shipments to spend. See four lancers on the way. The amount of lancers this player has made just massing one unit here. This is not how a Spanish fast fortress is usually played. But because we're against Russia today, which have a notorious for making a lot of infantry. 
making a lot of lances, and this is my favourite unit. I believe there was a comment on my previous video saying, more Spain and Russia. Well, here you go. Anyway, this is going to come in. The Falcon is now going to bombard down the blockhouse, and uh, lances and ca ca cannon is very good against infantry, but an unusual com... Uh, an unusual com combination because oh we see the five five cossacks we're gonna switch back to yumi yu he has sent five cossacks from his home city which are going to be very instrumental in this fight uh, these musketeers against this kind of mass here would lose i don't think they could win against two falconets and uh, and, and the, the lances lances are you know um, very good against infantry those cannons also very good against infantry but here he comes in on this side the lance is going to come in to get into combat with the musketeers five cossacks coming in from behind they're going to go up for the cannons if he can bring the cannons down then this is going to be very interesting indeed oh lots of reds Lancers on the wrong side, but obviously he needs them on that side to kill off the Cossacks. But Lancers are terrible versus Cavalry. They only do 20 damage. Their multiplier not coming into effect versus Cavalry. Bringing down the Cossacks, meaning that they cannot be, they haven't been attacking infantry, which is really what they need to be attacking. Losing both the cannons there. Blue calling his Minutemen as well. Musketeers now in hon high combat, switching back to co uh, uh, range mode so they can get some damages, damage, so they can do some damage as Red is retreating. But... I do not think that went the way Red wanted it to go. That is unfortunate for him there. He definitely had an army which could counter infantry very easily. But, obviously, Blue sending that five Cossack shipment. And he's sending four Cossacks as well now. Being just... just a great job countering those two falconets there but he has built a stable which is the right thing to do training cossacks because well as i mentioned earlier lancers are terrible at countering cavalry they only do 20 damage and their multiplier does not come into effect versus cavalry so obviously other they're not so good against other cavalry i mean cavalry don't counter them as such but they just don't do a very good job against cavalry for, for the reasons i've already mentioned we'll take a look at darwin giovanni over here sending the caliberos upgrade from his home city uh, we'll take a look at all of his shipments so far he has sent five lancers four lancers uh, two falconets and his next is Caleberos which increases the lancers attack damage well actually it doesn't increase their attack at all but we see here they do 20 damage it was times three that upgrade increases it to times four so they do another times 20 versus versus infantry absolutely crazy his next shipment available has a thousand coin just spent that 1000 coin on nine highlanders nine scottish highlanders they are very powerful units obviously it's a mercenary shipment they cost one shipment and you have to pay a thousand coin but you get nine very very powerful musketeer type units which are obviously as i just said very powerful they have 400 hit points and 63 range damage and they'll be very good at countering uh the cossacks obviously we does he know? He does not know he's trained a stable yet. Obviously, these players not really scouting each other, just kind of uh, guessing what units the other player will be training, I guess. But uh, we'll switch back to Yumi and see what he is up to. Still training Cossacks. Uh, looks like he's running out of useful age 2 shipments. Obviously, he could send Boyers, which increases Cossack hit points and attack. Um, but then, see running out of age 2 shipments, so he might want to think about aging up. So he's sending Boyers, as I just said, they're going to get the upgrade on the Cossacks, increase their, uh, you know, their stats. We'll turn Fog of War off. Okay, and I am back. Uh, Red, obviously, so when his Highlanders arrive, he'll probably come in and push out. He does have a very large mass of, of lances once again. Uh, Blue just stayed in the colonial age and massed a lot of units. Now getting some more market upgrades. Uh, has steel traps from earlier. Has obviously the coin, the H2 coin upgrade. We'll take a look at uh, Yumi Yu's, sorry, Darwin Giovanni's economy. See, Blue here has 45 gatherers. Red, sorry, Red here, yes, he has 33 gatherers. Obviously, the Spanish Fast Fortress, not notorious for its economy that it gives you, but obviously the powerful, overwhelming military you can get is also is very nice. Where are the Highlanders? They're on their way. Uh, just coming into combat here with a few Cossacks, which are out of position. Obviously, these were just trained at the stable, and obviously... They're not with the rest of the army, so they can easily be taken down. But here the fight is going to get going. Obviously, he wants to use the he wants to use the lances. I'm trying to micro here for him. They're going to use the, the, the Highlanders on the cavalry, but wants to bring the cavalry down with the Highlanders. The Highlanders are going to cause issues for the lances, and he wants to use the lances on the musketeers. He wants to bring them down. Um, but honestly, I, I don't think that it's, it's worked out the way he wanted it to again. Was he the, uh, his cos Blue's Cossacks attacking too many of the lances, his lances targeting too many of the Cossacks back. But who am I to criticise? Obviously, this, both of these players are so much better than me as a player. Obviously, I, I, I prefer, I think I, my casting skills are nice, but obviously I don't want to get into that. But we'll go back to Yumi Yu. What shipment he's got? He's sending, what could he send? The only useful shipment left really is 13 Strelitz, unless he wants to think about getting the Fencing School upgrade, which he has not done so. He's going for 13 Strelitz. Obviously, not so useful against Lancers. Strelitz have, like, what, 84 hit points, something like that. Lancers, <laughs> being this upgraded, do 80 straight-up damage. <laughs> Strelitz are kind of an, a counter-infantry unit, but it, obviously there are no, they're running out of useful shipments to send. 
and that is uh, unfortunate for him. But yes, I do think that that is the turning point for the game, though. That second fight not going so well, that first fight not going so well, and obviously Russian economy here. 51 gatherers for him. We'll take a look at Darwin Giovanni. Only 37 gatherers for red, so blue just going to be outmassing him here. We see uh, that will be five more lances, five hussars, and he's still got the highlanders here, so uh, we're still going to see a fight at the end. It's still going to play out, but uh, we'll just have to see what happens. Um... So, yes, we'll see what happens. But um, I don't want to talk about the players now. Obviously, Darwin Giovanni, as in my previous commentary, I said he was possibly one of the best players with the Russian civilization. And unusually, we have Yumiyu over here. Yumiyu, we'll switch over to Yumiyu. Uh, now, uh, obviously, Yumiyu, one of the best Spanish players. And uh, they've kind of switched civilizations, which uh, obviously I find kind of amusing, which is nice. Okay, so the fight going to get going over here. Uh, we'll switch. What are these building? I don't know what these are. I can't click on them because they are the other players. But um, here comes a fight. The Cossacks out of position. A nice play. Obviously. But here now the fight is really going to get going. Those Cossacks coming back. We see, I think it was like 10 Strelitz over here. Yes, 13 Strelitz from both blockhouses there. Oh, actually 10 Strelitz from both blockhouses there coming into fight. But over here, the Highlanders are going into hand combat, getting some damage off on the Cossacks. The Cossacks running away from the hand combated Highlanders. Going to lose some of the Lancers though. It doesn't look like there's enough Lancers there to do lasting damage onto the Musketeers. Lots of Strelitz, lots of reinforcements. And I think Red is going to call it here, guys. That looks like the end of the game. Blue has a much larger military mass and can replace his units very quickly, obviously has a nice economy, Spain does not have such a nice economy, and uh, to be honest, I do think that that is the end of the game, there it is. Thank you very much for watching guys, if you enjoyed the video, please do post GG in the comment section below, and also post Yumiu, send interjection more emails, because that is where he is getting some of the next few videos from, Yumiu is actually personally emailing me his recorded game, so if you could tell him to email me more, or post them on the Arturia Sanctuary, either way, that be great, tell him to do that, otherwise we're going to run out of recorded games.